All right, hey everybody, this is section 8.1, which is similarity in right triangles. Um, before we really get started with the main part of this section, I want to just kind of remind ourselves about the Pythagorean theorem, which is a squared plus b squared equals c squared. Remember that c squared is always your hypotenuse, which is always the longest side of your triangle, which is always across from your right angle, okay? Um, so when we look at this, if I wanna find the value of x, and I just label my sides as A, B, and C. Remember, A and B don't matter. Um, just the important one is that C is your hypotenuse. So I'm gonna do six squared plus four squared is equal to X squared. All right, six squared is 36. Four squared is 16 equals X squared. Okay, so this is gonna give us 52 is equal, didn't need to write that too so little. So that 52 is equal to x squared. So we are going to, from here, square root both sides. And remember, we're gonna want simplest radical form from here on out. So we want to either think of the biggest perfect square that goes into here, um, or we want to um, do our factor tree. So whichever one, I know that 52 is gonna be four times 13. So this is the same thing as saying four times 13, which is two times the square root of 13, because the square root of four is two. Okay, or again, we can factor tree. Remember, we're gonna put the smallest one on the left. Um, so this is two times 26, which is two times 13. I have my perfect match. They move out of the house, and the single stays underneath. Okay, so um, either way, whatever way works for you. Just kind of a reminder though on how we work that Pythagorean theorem. Okay, so let's take a look. When we have a right triangle, so tri triangle ABC right here is a right triangle, and I draw the altitude to the hypotenuse, so that CD, remember your altitude starts from a vertex and goes perpendicular to the other side, okay? That means what's gonna happen here is I'm going to create three similar triangles, okay? This little triangle here will be similar to this medium size one here, which will be similar to the largest triangle, okay? So I have a trick for you guys for how to work this out, okay? We wanna write a similarity statement. So what I'm gonna do is I don't care whether or not these are the actual angle measures, okay? I'm just gonna put in some angle measures just to help me kind of sort things out and identify with what's going where. So I'm gonna say and label that angle T here is 40 degrees and 90 minus 40 is 50, so this one up here would be 50 degrees, okay? So using the big triangle TRS right now, okay? I'm ignoring this piece right here for just a second, okay? So this triangle here, we're gonna say that it's 40, 50, and 90, okay? Because those will all add to 180. Again, I don't know if that's the actual measures of those angles, and I really don't care. This is just to help me kind of get things together. Okay, the next thing that we're gonna do is now instead of ignoring um, the middle piece, I'm just gonna ignore this for a second. I'll bring it back, so don't cross it out or anything crazy on your screen paper. But look here, if this is 40, this is 90, that would make this angle down here in this corner 50 degrees. Okay, then I'm going to do the same thing over here for this other side. Again, I know that I'm not really going to be deleting it. We're just going to look at it. This is 50. I know that this right here is 90. And then that's going to make this angle right here 40 degrees. Here's why we do that. Okay. I am going to start by naming my large triangle. So I'm gonna say triangle TRS. Well, when I look at triangle TRS, I went 40, 50, and then the 90, because S, the whole thing in the big triangle is 90 degrees. So my first angle measure was 40, my second one was 50, my third one is 90. So now for every triangle I do from here, I need to go in that order, the 40 degree angle first, then the 50, then the 90. 
So I'm going to say that this is similar to triangle. Now I'm going to move to the medium size one. It doesn't matter what order you go, like which one you do first, whether you do big, medium, or small. Um, but obviously the order of the letters will matter. So 40 first. So T comes first. In this triangle, my 50 degree angle is S. And then my 90 is P. Okay, then we're going to do my smaller triangle where my 40 degree angle is S, my 50 degree angle is R, and my 90 degree angle is P. So this is going to be the similarity statement for the three triangles. Okay, again, with each one, I went 40, 50, 90. Okay, and then I went 40, 50, 90. It doesn't matter what order you put the first one in. Okay, I could have said RTS, and then I would switch here to STP. Then I would switch here to RSP. Okay, that's fine. If I switched it up again, as long as all of them rotate the same way, it's perfectly fine, okay? Um, if you have any questions on that, make sure you get that written down. The next thing that we're going to look at is what we call a geometric mean. Okay, the biggest thing that you need to know, and I would suggest highlighting this on yours, so if you need to pause the video to get a highlighter, go ahead and do it, is this piece right here. Okay, in a proportion, you have two pieces called means and extremes. That's where the name here comes from. Okay, the two X's here are the means. So they're your geometric means. When it's the same, that's what creates that geometric mean, okay? All it is is in a proportion, you have a number over X equals X over some other number. That's a geometric mean, okay? So when I look here, if I'm finding the geometric mean between four and nine, it is four over X, equals x over 9. That's it, okay? Of course we need to solve, but that's all we're setting up is we're finding out what number is going to make both of these the same, all right? So then we cross multiply, we get x squared is equal to 4 times 9, okay? So if you want, you can jump right to here when you're finding your geometric means, okay? So this is going to give us x squared is equal to 36. Okay, then we're going to square root both sides. So x squared, or excuse me, x is going to be the square root of 36, which is 6. So that means that 4 over 6 is going to equal 6 over 9. This reduces to 2 thirds, and this reduces to 2 thirds. Okay, so 6 is your geometric mean between 4 and 9. All right? Okay, let's do another one. All right, I'm going to do the geometric mean between 6 and 15. <coughs> Excuse me. So I'm going to do 6 over x equals x over 15. Again, you can jump straight to here where we're going to do x squared is equal to 6 times 15. And 6 times 15 is going to give us 90. So I'm going to have x squared is equal to 90. Then we're going to square root both sides. So when we're looking here, again, I want to look for um, perfect squares. I know 9 is a perfect square. So this is the same thing as saying 9 times 10, right? Well, the square root of 9 is 3, so this is 3 times the square root of 10, okay? Um, again, you could also factor tree, and that's perfectly fine. So geometric mean, again, same number in the bottom of one fraction and the top of the other, and then you're filling in with other two numbers that they give you, okay? And we can talk about this a little more in class if we need to. All right, so let's look at our next piece of information here. Oh, I got a word that got a little crooked. Come back over here. Okay, um, when I have that same altitude drawn in a right triangle, okay, so we're looking at the same thing that we started off with here. We have a right triangle, and I have the altitude drawn to it. Your altitude is the geometric mean between these two pieces. So I could also say here 
that x over h is equal to h over y, okay? Or again, we're jumping right to that h squared equals x times y. Either one of these, and I would go ahead and write this down just in case that works better for you. Um, but you have to know this one. This is one of the ones that you have to understand, you have to know, okay? The other one is that we have the legs of the geometric mean between the piece of the hypotenuse that's closest to it and the whole thing. But that's not something that's going to be really necessary to know because we can use Pythagorean to get around that. Um, and I'll kind of show you what we mean here in just a second, okay? So again, please make sure that you are memorizing this, that your altitude is the geometric mean between the two pieces of the hypotenuse because you cannot get around not knowing that information. All right, so let's take a look here. I want to find x, y, and z. Notice that in my triangles, I'm missing two sides. Here I'm missing x and z. This one I'm missing x and y. And the big one I'm missing y and z. Okay, so that means I need to look here and I see that I have my altitude and the two pieces. Okay, so x is the geometric mean. The altitude here is the geometric mean between the two pieces of the hypotenuse. So I can put 2 over x is equal to x over 10. So from here, we're going to cross multiply. x squared is equal to 2 times 10, which is 20. Okay, we square root both sides. 20 is 4 times 5. Okay, so this is going to give us that x is 2 times the square root of 5. Okay? Now, once we know that this piece here is 2 times the square root of 5, to find y, I can just use Pythagorean theorem. y would be my um, hypotenuse, so it's my c. So I can say x squared, which is, and I'm going to change colors here, so it's 2 times the square root of 5, which is my x squared, plus 10 squared is equal to y squared. When I square this, remember, we're squaring this and squaring this, it's going to take us right back to here. So this is going to be 20 plus 100 is equal to y squared, okay? So this is going to give us 120 is equal to y squared, and then we square root both sides. Again, we can factor tree, or we find that the, perfect, the biggest perfect square is 4, so this is going to be 2 times the square root of 30. Okay, because we did this one actually on our um, radical review worksheet. So you can always reference that back if that doesn't make sense to you. Okay, again, factor tree is always an option. Then we can go back here, do the same thing. We have 2 square root 5 squared plus 2 squared is equal to z squared. So again, all we're using for the other two triangles is just Pythagorean theorem. So this is going to give me 20. 2 squared is 4. This is going to equal z squared. So we're going to get 24 is equal to z squared. All right, then we are going to square root both sides. This is going to be 6 times 4. So this is 2 times the square root of 6. Because again, the square root of 4 is 2. Once again, if that, oh, not z squared. If that does not make sense to you, please, please, please factor tree. Okay? Um, so what I want to go ahead and do is have you guys try this one here on your own. So go ahead and pause the video. Give this one a shot. Just a hint, you are still going to need to start knowing that your altitude is the geometric mean. All right. So pause and then do this problem and then we will talk about it in just a second. Okay, so take a minute, check your answers. You may need to pause. Um, we could start off right here because I know two of the three sides. I could start off by finding V with Pythagorean theorem. Um, so that's over here. Um, then when we find U, I need to again remember that 9 is the geometric mean between the pieces of the hypotenuse. So 9 goes the bottom of one fraction, top of the other, and then I can put U and 3 filled in. Notice that there's no squared, so we just straight divide by 3. And then again, once we know that this is 27, we use Pythagorean theorem to find W, okay? Because in this triangle, W is the hypotenuse. So again, let me know if there's any questions. Go ahead and write them down now, and then we can talk about anything that you need in class tomorrow. 
Have a great day, guys.